Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In a few past videos, we were messing around with these RV satellite dishes. Now, I haven't thought of a great use for these yet, but I do want to do a follow-up video on these really quick, in part because I actually just bought a third one. That's right, I'm continuing my career of professional hoarding by buying even more junk that I don't necessarily know what to do with. I still got a good deal on it. It was only $25 and it's brand new in the box. Now one thing that excites me about this particular dish, besides it being brand new in the package, is it actually comes with what looks like a manual control. It appears like I can directly control the azimuth and elevation on this dish, rather than just telling it, find a direct TV satellite. It also comes with all this uh, coax cable. The dish! And you'll notice this looks almost identical to that dish tailgater that I already have. Let's see what we got in here. And this actually looks like a wireless controller, so I can control the dish from wherever. Although I think I do still have to provide some power uh, through the coax cable here, so the satellite receiver or meter is going to be providing that 16 to 18 volts that uh, runs the LNB and the electronics in here. Quick reference poster of madness here. Warranty junk and all that. The, uh, another manual. Ooh, got a CD with this one. So as the box says, this is intended to be a portable satellite TV receiver. You don't need to mount it anywhere, you just bring it along camping or RVing or to your cabin or out to the ball game or whatever. I don't know about you, I don't normally watch a lot of TV while I'm camping, but I guess that makes me a really bad American. Alright, let's see what's in this dome here. I'm sure it's nearly identical to that dish tailgater that I have, but let's take a look anyway. This thing's a little bit harder to get apart than the tailgater, but uh... There we go. Well, this one's even prettier. Look at that nice blue dish. Now, it's got a little uh, receiver antenna for the control board. And once again, I've pulled out the briefcase of satellite experimentation junk. One of these days, maybe I'll make this into like a cyber deck or something where it's all self-contained, but right now it's just my bin of satellite-related garbage. I think we're going to want the meter here that will supply power to the dish, and if we can pick any TV up with it, we've got the little screen on here. Okay, meter is on. Controller is on. Alright, that works, but it is incredibly slow. Uh, we might have to speed this guy up a little bit for uh, more excitement in the video. I'm just going to skip past looking for the commercial satellites and try to go straight to some of those free-to-air sats. We'll try AMC21 that we did in a previous video with my old internet dish. I'm unfortunately still having some issues with this GT Media V8 Finder 2, the little installation meter TV thing that I got. It's okay when it works, but its little internal battery is only good for about 15 minutes, and it doesn't really want to both charge and be on, it just keeps rebooting itself and then sometimes it reboots itself while it's doing a search or while it's doing other stuff. It, it's just not a very reliable device. While we're waiting for that little meter to charge, let's take another look at the older dish tailgater unit. So we've got the dish tailgater on the right and the view cube unit on the left. And it looks like the motor, at least from the tailgater, is from 2014. And the motor on the view cube is from 2008. So. Actually, this one that I thought was newer is a few years older than the other one. This one that I just got has a pretty simple mainboard here. There's not as much going on, and it's got that old RJ11 jack at the bottom. The tailgater here has a much denser mainboard. It actually has a little tuner in there. At least I think that's what the block is that uh, the coax is going into. And then it has that USB connection. And now that we've got this open, I'm still a little curious about this USB port. What can we do with that? Alright, so let's see what I can do with this dish on USB. We're going to see what we've got currently plugged into USB. All the regular internal stuff on this computer. We're going to plug in the dish, and then we'll run uh, LSUSB again. So now, we have this thing, CDC RS-232 emulation demo. So I'm kind of googling things as I go along here because I don't actually know what I'm doing, but um, I'm going to try and get some more details by running uh, dmessage and search for TTY. So we've got two things. We've got our regular console and we've got this TTY ACM0 USB device. I'm going to do some more googling on that. 
So next, what the internet suggests is try running screen on that uh, TTY device. So we're going to try uh, screen dev TTY ACM0 and set that to 9600 baud. This is nothing related with a uh, dish tailgater. This is just random commands that I'm finding online vaguely relating to these things that I'm googling, that uh, CDC Corp demo unit and ACM0. I'm not actually sure what any of this really does. I'm just kind of blindly following along Linux commands on the internet, which is probably a terrible idea and a good way to brick the computer, but uh, we'll see what happens. Nothing. All right, while I don't know much about Linux, I do know that if it isn't working, try it again as root. And let's try that screen again. And we've got something. Maybe a serial console? Maybe a response from the dish? Let's try typing in help. Oh, and we've got a help menu. So we actually are talking to the dish right now, and we've got some options. We can do things with it. Um, this is kind of cool. We can rotate the dish. We can elevate the dish. Uh, we can nudge the dish. <laughs> we can... Uh, monitor signal strength, we can calibrate sensors, we can uh, check out GPS stuff. Let's try uh, elevating it to 30 degrees and go. Well, I think that went to zero degrees, but um, yeah, at least it did something. And I I think I uh, rebooted the dish doing that because uh, my serial console has crashed. Since the battery is dead on my little meter, I'm just powering this dish off of two 9-volt batteries hacked into the cable. So let's see what other info we can get out of the uh, dish brain. I'm still not really sure of the difference between uh, elevation, L-angle, and L-accurate. Um, it seems to have different measurements for positions. All right, let's try uh, LAC, elevation accurate, for 30. Crashed again. I'm definitely doing something wrong here. And it's crashed yet again. It's possible I'm just running out of power when I try to run the motors. Let's go back to trying the little meter. All right, we've got the meter powering the dish. Let's try L angle 30. All right, it seems to be coming up to 30 degree angle. That's what I expected. So we definitely just weren't getting enough power out of those 9 volt batteries. We needed the output that a meter or receiver can give it. Now the current azimuth or rotation is reporting as uh, 3697.30, which it's not a compass heading, and I don't think this thing actually has a compass in it. We're just gonna try uh, 20 degrees on that. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's going too far around, I think. I might need to unplug this before it tangles itself. Obviously, I don't understand what these variables are. Let's try that tilt sensor calibration. Oh, this gives us a sub-menu. I'm going to try this RF watch. So that definitely seems to report the signal strength, probably on some preset beacon frequency that it's looking for on a given satellite. So I'm a little curious about the scan command. Since it says it'll do it at a current elevation, I'm thinking it's just going to pan the dish back and forth uh, looking for a beacon frequency from one of these TV satellites. Um, so it wants more actions. It wants me to dump or reset a scan. Nothing happened. Scan reset. Nothing happened. I don't know what scan does. Well, so far, I don't know what all the onboard commands in this thing's brain can do, but there are some very interesting possibilities. We can definitely aim it elevate it, and read the RF strength. So I think if I can automate some of that, um, do a scripted interface to that serial console command system, aims the dish, records the RF, and writes that out to a bitmap of some sort. So I could do a heat map of the sky, I could potentially see where the satellites are, I could see where there's other RF sources, um, possibly in the frequency range that this is looking for. I'll have to experiment with that a little bit more Maybe in the winter when I, I want to be inside doing projects and sitting at the computer. This time of year I want to be outside, I want to be in the garage, I want to be doing other stuff. So maybe we'll set this guy aside for the moment. We'll go back to uh, the other dish, the view cube that I just got, and see if we can do some other stuff with that one. 
So I can definitely see transponders on some of the free-to-air satellites like AMC-21 and Galaxy-19. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing any uh, TV signals on here. So I think the signals just aren't strong enough for this little bitty dish. So does that mean these dishes are useless without a TV subscription? Well, maybe not. Let's try some other things. I went to Axeman once again, as I do, and I got a whole bunch more random RF stuff. We've got another Allen B. Got some antenna cables. We've got uh, whatever this is. Got a little monitor screen. I believe this is a power injector, so I should be able to use that to power the LNB. And then I've got this thing, which is um, apparently a B band converter. If I'm using this power injector, I need to make sure it's only sending power one way into the antenna or LNB and not back to my little RTL SDR. That could be bad for the electronics on this. For 45 cents, you can't go wrong for these little power injectors. Again, I'm not sponsored by Axeman, although I wish I was. This is a GPS signal, and I don't need the dish for this. I'm just using this little GPS L-band patch antenna. You'll notice I've started to take it apart, because you can actually do other stuff with it. So I'm going to open up this GPS antenna, and I'm removing the bandpass filter. That's this little block marked 1575. That will open up the antenna to receive more of the L-band than just GPS signals. Okay, we've got the filter off. So now I need to jumper the input and output. So on this particular unit, you can see the uh, traces coming in here. One of these is input, one is output. The other two are ground, so we just need to jumper these guys with some wire. All right, my soldering skills are poor to none, but I think that's a good connection. Now we're going to put this shield back on and stick this thing on our dish. So that little L-band patch is supposed to be just a standalone wide beam receiver, but I've actually got it stuck to the back of my dish. And then I'm aiming my dish around at the geosynchronous Clark belt of satellites and just uh, seeing what I can pick up. So we're definitely seeing some stuff on L-band. Here's another random satellite. Not sure what this one is. Here's another satellite data stream of some sort. Now you notice when I'm using the little L-band antenna in here, I'm not using the original L and B at all. In fact, I've pulled it out and I've just got that uh, L band patch jammed in there. So it's getting signals reflected off the dish, off this thing, and then theoretically back down to there. I am still powering the dish with my little power injector, but that's just driving the motors on the uh, pan and tilt system here. So when it comes to these satellite dishes, I'm still just basically poking and experimenting and I still haven't found a really good use for these, or at least a practical use. They're kind of fun as a little frequency spectrum explorer. It's cool to aim them around, see what they can look at, see what kind of signals we get, but uh, I think we're going to need a little more work to do anything actually useful or maybe a little more interesting with these. So I think we're going to set all this stuff aside for now. We're going to come back to at least one of these, if not the manual controlled one, then that uh, one I can control the serial console. I think we want to find out more about that. We want to see if we can program that to uh, do like an automated scan and record and output what it sees, something like that. But that's going to have to be a different video. So hopefully I haven't just bored everybody poking around with these satellite dishes, not really knowing what I'm doing. If anybody out there has any suggestions for things I can do with these, legally of course, um, send them down in the comments. We'll play around with these a little more. Like I said, we'll have some future videos and maybe we'll try some other stuff with them. Until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.